Hello everyone, my name is Bilal Kurani, and in today's talk I will be presenting our work on counting a stationary crowd using off-the-shelf Wi-Fi. This work is in collaboration with Professor Yasmin Mustofi at UC Santa Barbara. As we all know, wireless signals such as Wi-Fi are everywhere these days. In recent years, researchers have thus started to look into utilizing these Wi-Fi signals for sensing the environment. For example, Wi-Fi has been utilized for through-wall imaging, person identification and tracking, activity recognition, and for general smart home applications. In this talk, we are interested in the problem of counting a stationary or seated crowd using Wi-Fi signals, where the crowd can be engaged in any kind of activity. For instance, a crowd could be watching TV, attending a lecture or a presentation, reading in a library, or attending a social event, and many other scenarios. In general, crowd counting is important for many applications, and counting a seated crowd in particular applies to many real-world scenarios. Most of the state-of-the-art in crowd counting has focused on counting a mobile crowd, where each person in the crowd is moving around, which does not apply to our scenario. The literature on stationary crowd counting, on the other hand, is very sparse. A couple of papers have tried using the breathing signals of the individuals in the crowd to get the crowd count for a very small number of people. However, for this to work, people have to breathe with different breathing rates and to be perfectly still without any kind of motion for a long time, which is not practical. Other papers rely on machine learning techniques, but they are not generalizable, since they need to be tested in the same exact configuration and seating locations as in training. In this work, we then ask, how can we count a stationary crowd in a normal setting? Here is our underlying idea. We observe that while people are stationary, they do not stay still for a long time, and they frequently engage in small in-place body movements called fidgets, such as adjusting their poses, crossing their legs, checking their cell phones, or moving their arms, and many others. As an example for this crowd, we can see their individual fidget sequences as a function of time on the right. We can also see the aggregate fidget process that results from the superposition of the individual fidget sequences. We define two important metrics. A crowd fidgeting period is defined as a time period where at least one person is fidgeting, while a crowd silent period is defined as a time period where no one is fidgeting. We propose that this aggregate fidgeting process of the crowd carries information on the total number of people. For instance, intuitively speaking, if the number of people increases, the crowd fidgeting periods tend to get longer due to the higher chance of overlap between the fidgets of individual people, and also the crowd silent periods tend to get smaller. The aggregate fidgeting process of the crowd can be extracted from the received Wi-Fi measurements as we shall see shortly. Next we shall formally find the mathematical relation between this aggregate fidgeting process and the total number of people. Let's first define some parameters related to our problem. Consider the fidgeting time signal of a single person. Let's denote the interfidget time or the time between the starts of consecutive fidgets of the same person by the variable t. We have shown that a Poisson process, which is typically used to describe many natural processes, captures this process well. This means that the interfidget time t follows an exponential distribution with a mean of gamma n for the nth person. We do not assume that all people have the same fidgeting rate. Rather, the average interfidget time gamma of each person is different and is drawn from a distribution p gamma. We then denote the duration of an individual's fidget by d, which follows a distribution bd. Next, Consider the aggregate fidget process resulting from the superposition of the individual processes. In this process, we use the variable g to denote the duration of a crowd fidgeting period with a distribution pg. We also use the variable s to denote the duration of a crowd silent period with a distribution ps. Our problem then mathematically boils down to answering the following question. How do pg and ps relate to the total number of people n? Our key observation is that this problem resembles an old queuing theory problem. Let's see how. Queuing theory is the mathematical study of waiting lines or queues. 
a problem in queuing theory can be described by a triad of symbols. The first one describes the arrival process of customers or clients. When it is M, for example, then the arrival process of the clients is Markovian, or the inter-arrival times are exponentially distributed. The second symbol describes the service times, or the period that a customer spends being served by one of the servers. When it is G, for example, it means that the service times could have any general distribution. And finally, the third symbol is the number of servers. For this MG infinity queue, the system is said to be busy if there is at least one client, and to be idle if the system has no clients. By close inspection of this system, we find a strong analogy between it and our fidgeting problem. More specifically, a client being served in the MG infinity queue is analogous to a person fidgeting. The busy periods of the MG infinity queue are analogous to our crowd fidgeting periods, and the idle periods of the MG infinity queue are analogous to our crowd silent periods. The busy and idle periods of MG infinity queues have been studied and characterized by Wolfgang Stadge in 1985. By borrowing tools from queuing theory and after some mathematical derivations, we can find an expression for the distribution of the duration of the crowd fidgeting periods, PG. As we can see, this distribution explicitly depends on the number of people n, the average of the individual fidgeting rate, and the distribution of an individual's fidget duration. We can also find an expression for the PDF of the duration of crowd silent periods, PS, which also depends on the total number of people n. As such, we can find a maximum a posteriori or a map estimate for the number of people, as the number that maximizes the probability of n, given the durations of all the crowd fidgeting and silent periods. With some mathematical derivations, and using the famous Bayes rule, we find that the map estimate of n depends on the PDFs of the crowd fidgeting and silent periods, which we calculated earlier using queuing theory, and the prior on a general individual's fidgeting statistics. Thus, in order to complete the picture and see how we can use this estimation equation, we need to answer two questions. First, this equation requires a prior on the distribution of a general individual's fidgeting statistics. So how can we obtain this prior? Second, this equation requires getting the measurements for the crowd fidgeting and silent periods. So how can we extract these measurements from the ambient Wi-Fi signals? So let's start with the first question. How can we obtain the prior on a general individual's fidgeting statistics? We note that this prior depends on the high-level class of activity that the individual is engaged in. For example, some classes of activities require more focus, which results in an individual fidgeting less. We also note that the high-level class or type of the activity can generally be inferred from the venue in which the Wi-Fi link is installed. For example, people in a library would be reading, while people in a classroom would be attending a lecture or a presentation. In this paper, we consider two high-level classes of activities, audience-style activities and reading-style activities. Each of these classes constitute a wide variety of activities. In order to collect the fidgeting priors for these classes, we collected fidgeting data of individuals from YouTube videos related to each activity. Specifically, for the audience-style activities, we manually timestamped the fidgeting data of 30 people attending lectures and talks and presentations in 14 different YouTube videos. And for reading, we collected the fidgeting data of 24 people in 24 different YouTube videos. As we can see here, these are the PDFs of our collected data for the two types of activities. For example, we can see that overall, the interfidget times are generally higher or people fidget less when they are reading, as compared to when they are attending an event, since reading in general requires more focus and attention. We can also see a general fidget lasts for about 3 seconds on average, and its distribution doesn't vary much between different types of activities. Now we move to the second question. How can we extract the crowd fidgeting and silent periods from Wi-Fi? Consider a setting where a Wi-Fi link is placed near a seated person. The complex baseband received signal consists of two parts, the direct signal from the transmitter to the receiver and the reflected signal off of the person's body. We can see here that the phase of the reflected signal directly depends on the speed of the motion of the person's body. We have shown in recent work 
that the phase difference between any two receiver antennas, which is easily measurable on off-the-shelf devices, has the following form, which is a sinusoid whose instantaneous frequency is related to the speed of body parts. When there is no fidgeting, the only involved body motion is the breathing chest motion, and it can be proven that the instantaneous bandwidth of the Wi-Fi signal in this case is less than two times the breathing rate, denoted here by F node. During fidgeting, on the other hand, there will exist spectral content above 2 F node, since fidgeting generally contains speeds that are larger than the speed of chest during breathing. Hence, by filtering all the components below 2 F node, the signal content related to breathing is filtered out, and we can effectively capture the impact of fidgets. As an example, here we can see a sample filtered Wi-Fi signal when two people were near the Wi-Fi link. We attached accelerometers to the arms of the two people to lock their ground truth fidgets. As we can see, when there are no fidgets, the Wi-Fi signal contains only noise, while when at least one person is fidgeting, there are major signal components. Hence, by a simple moving variance calculator, we can easily detect the crowd fidgeting and silent periods. The durations of these periods can then be used to estimate the total number of people using the derived estimation equation. To experimentally validate our approach, we ran several experiments in different areas. For instance, in this patio area, we ran 19 experiments where up to and including 10 people sat down in rows of chairs together to watch a movie while a Wi-Fi link collected Wi-Fi measurements. In different experiments, people sat in several different seating configurations, some of which are shown in the figure here. This figure shows the estimate of the number of people as a function of time in two sample experiments with 8 and 10 people. At any point in time, we use all the crowd fidgeting and silent periods prior to this point to estimate the number of people. As we can see, the estimate starts to converge to the true number of people in a couple of minutes after collecting enough crowd fidgeting statistics. This table on the right then shows the final estimate for the crowd count for all experiments, as well as the true number of people. We can see that the estimation error is zero or only one person in all experiment except only one, which shows a very good counting performance. In this indoor apartment, we ran four experiments where four people sat together in different seating configurations to watch a lecture. We can see that the counting error is zero or only one person in all experiment in this indoor area. In this covered area on the right, we ran four experiments where 8 or 10 people sat in different seating configurations while engaged in a reading activity. We can see that the counting error is zero or only one person in all experiments in this area as well. Finally, in this location, we placed the Wi-Fi link behind the wall to show that our method can still detect the crowd fidgeting data and consequently count the number of people even through walls. We ran 20 experiments where up to and including 10 people seated in different configurations were engaged in either reading or watching a documentary. In this setting, we get a counting error of zero or only one person in 18 out of the 20 experiments, showing a very good counting performance even in through wall scenarios. In summary, we ran a total of 47 experiments in four different locations, including through wall areas where the counting error was zero or only one person 96.3% of the time in non-through wall areas and 90% of the time in through wall areas. To conclude, in this paper we observed that the crowd fidgeting behavior can be used to count the crowd and proposed a new mathematical model inspired from queuing theory to describe the relationship between the two. We further proposed a Wi-Fi processing pipeline to extract the fidgeting statistics of a crowd. We experimentally validated our approach with 47 experiments in four different areas, including through wall scenarios. In our experiments, up to and including 10 people were seated in different configurations and engaged in different activities. The counting error was less than or equal to one person 96.3% of the time in non-through wall experiments and 90% of the time in through wall experiments. Thank you.